vision. Hey everyone, Dave here. 2014 has been a rough year for a lot of us. Seems like every day there was more bad news. I myself spent most of the year unemployed and dealing with various personal heartbreaks. But despite all the stress and sadness, there was a bright spot. For all the misery that 2014 brought us, it also brought us one very, very happy thing. The return of Homestar Runner. Everybody loves the Homestar Runner. Or at the very least, everybody loves the Strong Bad or the Cheat of the Trogdor. The Homestar Runniverse dominated web entertainment in the pre-YouTube days, making fans out of everyone from Joss Whedon to They Might Be Giants. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who took their long overdue return from hiatus as a prompt to go back and revisit every single link on the entire site, re-exploring the entire comedy universe that stemmed from email typos, inside jokes, and collective nostalgia. And so, in honor of Decemberween, or Januween if you're watching on YouTube, I'm celebrating some of my favorite creations of the Brothers Chaps. And while the entire website is full of brilliance, there is one page in particular that I've probably spent more time on than any other. And that's why today, I'm geeking out over Peasant's Quest. Dave's Obsession! Dave's Obsession of the Moment! Dateline 2004! My Homestar Runner Obsession was at its height! Every Monday morning, I would dash off to the computer and see if there was a new cartoon. It was July 19th, and I saw a new short about a Vitelectrix game, a clear parody of King's Quest and similar Sierra titles. Two of my obsessions converging? It's not my birthday. It's like two and a half weeks after my birthday. At first, I thought it was just a fake commercial sketch. After all, it was funny enough as a joke, and it was filled with clearly fake statistics. And while they mentioned one real game, they also mentioned one fake one. But at the end, it actually gave a release month. That's awfully bold for a fake commercial. Two weeks later, my brother and I logged onto the site. The game was there. The game was real. A full-fledged Sierra parody game available to play for free. We were ecstatic, and we spent the morning playing it until we beat it. What blew our minds was how accurately the game captured the feel of its parody target. Exploring peasantry and looking for ridiculous puzzle solutions felt almost exactly like exploring daventry and looking for ridiculous puzzle solutions. Except without the mind-numbing frustration. All of the good parts of the Sierra game experience were there, or at least comical representations of them were, and the game successfully managed to capture our nostalgia for those early quests. Oh, that's right. Now I'm nostalgic for a thing that made me nostalgic for another thing. I am Internet Incarnate! The game has all of the conventions of early Sierra, from the stealing random crap from every room you enter, to the token arcade-style minigame, and of course the conventions are riffed on affectionately, yet bluntly. Like an actual Sierra game, some of the funniest stuff comes out of the plethora of really, really stupid ways to die. The final punchline of the game drives this home more than anything. They also riff on the overly complicated, illogical puzzles of early games, mainly by including puzzle solutions you'd absolutely never think of without the over-the-top hints. Or, in some cases, without the game trailer. And, of course, they riff on the early graphic style, its inconsistent effectiveness, and the old artist's tendency to include details that seem far more important than they actually are. But even beyond the nostalgia, it's a damn funny game. Yes, the jokes might have more meaning if you already have knowledge of early Sierra, but even if you don't, the game presents the style accurately enough that you can still get the joke. And like everything Homestar, it's full of inside jokes, obscure references, and easter eggs. That said, I don't know how many people who didn't appreciate the nostalgia got far enough to appreciate the other jokes. I knew at least a few people who were so confused by the gameplay experience that they gave up before they even managed to smell like a peasant. But surely there was someone out there who had never played a King's Quest game before but still managed to get the hang of it easily enough. People talk a lot about movies that work equally well as parodies of a genre and as examples of the genre, and Peasant's Quest absolutely fits that description. Except for the movie part. It's a game. The Peasant's Quest movie is just a trailer, and it's pure spoof. Pure spoof that has Dr. Krieger from Archer in it. But the Peasant's Quest game, while on the short side, is a legitimate adventure gaming experience. And while it's a gently snarky take, it has the potential to be someone's entry point into the genre as a whole. So if you play Peasant's Quest and are curious about the source material, check out the King's Quest series. It may not be as self-aware, but it'll feel familiar to you. Just be sure to take advantage of multiple save slots. They were crueler about dead ends back then. So, have you played Peasant's Quest? Or were you more of the action-y, stinkoman type? 
share your thoughts in the comments, and in two weeks, we'll be talking about the reason you all went to the site in the first place, Adespi Mills. So until then, this is Dave, signing off.